Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome to more Terra Invicta, playing as the Resistance. Not an absolute ton happened in the last video, we kind of continued to shore up what we've already been doing. I did manage to snag the UK away from the servants, that's going to be a pretty big dent in their military capabilities. We could now also reverse Brexit and bring the UK back into the fold with the European Union. I am tempted to do something like that, could be kind of fun. Or... We could hold on to these guys and try to create another sort of super state, a uh, renewed British Commonwealth. Not with Canada. Canada is reserved for the United States. But we could pick up, let's say, South America, Australia, New Zealand. I mean, these are all good options for us. I don't know. We'll kind of play that one by ear. In the meantime, we are using up 105 mission control now. We are barely on the cusp of the aliens attacking, and I've been boosting up my science as much as possible. We've also started working on the strategic deception tech, which should allow me to build even more stuff in space without necessarily invoking the aliens' wrath. So, yeah, this is a very, very high priority for me. We're also building up some ships. Because with three monitors in space, I'm hoping that in 200 days I can shoot down one of the alien destroyers. That's undoubtedly going to peeve them off and they're going to retaliate against me. But we do need to do that anyway. That's part of my story and it's going to unlock some additional features for us. So we have to go ahead and get started on that. Might as well try to be the first faction to launch anything into space. Aw, oh, dang it! Just when I was saying I want to be the first human to launch a proper warship, it looks like Project Exodus beats me to it. <sighs> Dang it. All right, hang on. Uh, we can actually see exactly what is on that ship, I think. Let's go to show all fleets. This is a good way to keep an eye on all the aliens to see what's happening. By the way, it looks like somebody is leaving Earth and heading somewhere else. Okay. That's fine. I think this might have been the Dreadnought. Anyway, uh, we're looking for the Echo 1. Uh-huh. What kind of ship you got here there, buddy? What kind of ship is it? It is a Peregrine class escort. And it is, I think, phenomenally weak. This is a terrible ship. Okay, well, I mean, it's got a Nerva Drive. It's got a lot of the stuff it's going to need. It's just got pretty weak weapons and only a water sink, and that's it. Wow. Yeah, all right. Well, if we came into a tow, to, uh, tow fight, I'm pretty confident my uh, monitors would be able to shred that thing. What's another tech that I'm going to want? We could go for the militarization of space. This is going to let me get some marines, which I'll be able to use to... Uh, try to take over other people's habs or settlements, which could be great, considering I did not get everything on Mars that I wanted. It would really upset certain people, and I think it counts as an atrocity on Earth, which I'm pretty sure reduces some support for me, but we could overcome that. Could start working on some upgrades to our weapon types. Particle cannons, rail guns, infrared combat lasers. We do need all of those at some point as well. And then extended space survival would lead to things like better uh, habitats, ring habs, tier 3 satellites or settlements. Obviously pretty important as well, but I don't have anywhere near enough mission control to do that without antagonizing the aliens, so I don't see a huge point in doing that yet. Let's go ahead and start working on things like the rail guns and particle cannons for the point defense and the infrared combat lasers. Wow, we finished strategic deception already? Wow, that actually felt really, really fast. Beautiful. Okay. So, now I can do more stuff, right? That's how it works? Pretty sure? Um, okay, good. Should we go ahead and start working on their purpose and just figure out what's going on? Yep, I think so. But we're going to reduce the priority of that and focus on some other things instead. So, if I'm correct, how this equation now works is you take your used MC, in this case 105, you multiply that by 0.3 because we're on normal difficulty. It's actually a lot worse if you're playing on the higher difficulties. So that would give me 31.5 resting hatred from the aliens. Then you multiply that by, in this case, I think it's 0.8 or 0.75 to the power of however many techs you've got that reduce it, which is only one. So that should set me at 25.2. So that should be my resting hatred plus whatever's currently burning off from antagonizing the servants, the protectorate, and the aliens themselves. I think that means I'm a little bit safer now to go ahead and continue expanding in different places. Let's go for the Adventure Rupees. And I'm going to turn this into an operational center and also some extra skunk works. Because I need to get some extra boosts toward my engineering research. Great Nations tech is finally done. Alright. Gonna be a little while before we see all the projects pop up that we want, but we're getting there. Do we want to continue working on some extra things like the combat lasers and stuff? Yes. 
Let's continue learning how to properly militarize space. And the servants have built a ship too. Oh, dang it all the heck. All right, uh, no, good for you. It's this teeny little thing called the Pegasus. Oh, it's so cute, probably. What's even on this thing? Do we know? Let's see, hang on. Click on this, drop it down, Pegasus. Crate missiles, auto cannons, water heat sink. Yep, it is a very low tech ship. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but yeah, no, it's, it's really not any better than the, uh, the Exodus. Yep, these ships suck, guys. You should be embarrassed. I've discovered a little bit of a problem, though. The aliens are returning to Earth with a Dreadnought and a Destroyer here. The Dreadnought being the scary one that could actually go destroy a whole load of my stuff. Ah! Just when I wanted to get my own ships launched so I can blow up some of your surveillance destroyers, you bring the big guns again. There's the railgun tech. Cool, so now we can use that. Proper uh, super magnets to launch a little metal slug at hyper velocity. Love it. Um, okay, let's take a look at that tech tree. So, what do we need in order to get things like the layered defense? Defense platforms of some sort. Layered defense array, that's it, and it's right down here, okay. So first we need to get things like point defense arrays, which I'm currently working on for that to work. I need the infrared combat lasers, which I'm researching, and militarization of space. Got it, all right, so if we want to beeline for defenses, I need to get that militarization tech. No problem. That's fine. We can do that. Our first ship has been launched. The surprise monitor class. Excellent. All right. So that's two. Waiting on a third. Um, what are the odds that the aliens are just going to like, I don't know, leave or anything? You guys want to just like leave Earth? Is that an option? Do I have to wait until you run out of uh, Delta V? You're already about like halfway empty. I'm just saying, if you want to leave, you know, no one's going to miss you. The infrared lasers are done. Um, the particle cannon is something we had talked about doing for a point defense particle beam. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. When we set up our layered defenses, it's going to be comprised of at least a couple different weapons. I think it's made up of your best laser and your best like kinetic weapon. So having upgraded guns uh, should just translate into better defenses as well as better offense on my ships. So it makes sense to get these things researched. Oh, we finally have our HAB module being built on Hertha. Cool. We're going to be seeing our nobles and our base metals going up a lot. All right. So the bases in the outer asteroid are starting to get set up. Point defense arrays. Nice. Okay. That's going to lead toward the layer defense. Aha. Their purpose. All right. We've been able to solicit invaluable information from the alien captive. Thanks to the discovery that Hydra falsehoods carry unique ferrocyte signatures. Oh good, we've got a lie detector test. Well, that makes my life a whole lot easier. Or actually, it may not even necessarily be required to have a lie detector test. The Hydra knows that it can be detected, so they'd rather be silent than caught because it's great shame if they are caught lying. So if they just don't answer the question, it means they're gonna lie. That, that would definitely improve a line of questioning at least a little bit. Whoa, whoa, what is all this? Ah! So the transcript here, apparently I am using words that are at least somewhat more understandable, so it's giving me better answers. So clarify the reason for subjugation. They want to neutralize humans as a threat, but humans aren't a threat. Wrong. No, we're not. Potential threat is still a threat. So apparently we're in a preliminary infancy stage of becoming a threat. Therefore, we must be able to stop them. Interstellar aggression is a matter of time. Huh, okay. They're making fun of the fact that I can't unify the planet. We're clearly too, um, let's say, unruly in order to be a proper, unified, and coherent species. The salamanders believe the same. Now they serve the Hydra. You know, that's another reference to the salamanders. It certainly seems like that is another alien race that was subjugated by the Hydra and works for them. Maybe a thrall species of some sort. Interesting. Also, griffins? What's a griffin? I haven't seen anything about a griffin yet. The Salamanders took our home world. Hostility and fear drove them to Xenocide. Uh-huh. Never again. Interesting. So they believe they need to control lesser species as a matter of protecting themselves. Very interesting. I mean, it makes some sense, you know, to be honest. It kind of makes sense what they're trying to do. We just can't let them do that to us. I refuse to become a slave thrall species. Hey, did we finish building that third ship yet? Because I thought we had. No, it's about to be done, though. Okay, give it like one second. Oh, wait, hang on. We can sabotage more stuff. No alien tech for you! Gosh, dang, these guys never give it up. 
All right, that's our third ship. So, do we go for it? I think actually before we try to attack, maybe, maybe we should consider refitting our ships a little bit because we know roughly what they've got, right? But we think that they have lots of missiles and I have zero point defense. So maybe it would make sense then to try and edit this. I assume that something I can do is refit the ships in some way or another. Invalid refit, why? The hull cannot change. Weapons can change if the new weapon is of the same type. All right, um, here's a new thought then. If I can't change those and they're gonna be my missile boats, would it make sense to make something small like an escort vessel that's got nothing but point defense on it and this will fly close to the destroyers and keep them alive while my gunboats just launch a million missiles? Yeah, we could try building something like this Cepheus over here. It's not terribly expensive, got pretty good combat acceleration, a similar Delta V to my other ships, so it should keep pace. I could even toss on some Marine Assault units so I have another use for this thing, and that is to assault enemy Habs and take some of those away. Okay, um... Cool, let's, uh, let's go ahead and construct two of these. I know this slows things down. I know, I know. But I really want to actually have a chance at, like, winning this. And it's only 68 days. That's not too bad if it increases the odds of surviving. I'm gonna say that that's probably okay. Oh, fun fact, by the way. The United States military has progressed to the robotic age officially. So our symbol changes a little bit here. We now have some very, very, very good armies. And if you zoom in, you can actually see what they look like. Pretty cool, snazzy tanks. Ah, and now I can research cruisers. Yes, all of that sounds like fun. However, if I build too many of them, the aliens will attack me. And that's less good, honestly. Um, so I'm not sure that it's worth it. Are we about done with, yes, United North America is done. Okay, cool. So maybe we can do a unification federation project in just a bit. Oh, this is a useful project. Off-Earth Mining 10% increase? Wow. Yeah, finally, a project that is objectively worth getting. Man, I was wondering when we were gonna find that. So many options, so few obvious choices, but that one's good. Oh gosh, dang it, there goes my spy. Ah! So, how do we feel about this whole federation thing with Canada? We could seek a federation with the European Union? N -n no, but I do propose federation with Canada. So let's do that, and that should be it, right? Yes, okay, Canada and the United States have joined a federation. They're gonna share their space program funding and boost, okay? And after 12th of April, 2032, we will be able to unify the two countries into one glorious super nation. Oh my God, yes, okay. The layered defense array project is now available. Beautimous, okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's see, we're actually almost done with some of these projects. Let's just go ahead and speed one of them up so it finishes by the end of the month. So I can quickly swap over to that layer defense array. This is gonna change everything. Once I feel like I've got some basic defenses, I'll feel a lot better about being aggressive. Okay, okay, layer defense array, here we go. I love, by the way, that the AI is just throwing, what? Whoa, what? Okay, um. Yeah, my council just got murdered by the Protectorate. Wow, okay. She was my primary advisor, and look at that, all of a sudden we are way down on our cap. Uh-huh. Okay, um, we need to find somebody else then. Um, somebody who could also function as a good advisor, ideally. An astronaut could kind of work for that. With the command skill, I actually could uh, ramp up my military spending a little bit. Gosh dang, I'm actually really peeved about that, holy crud. This astronaut is actually really good. Has pretty much everything I would want as far as some of these um, cybernetics go. Seems pretty solid. Age 54 is unfortunate because I'm getting a lot of older folks who are going to die on me at some point, but this gets me a lot of the stats that I need to start off. And if I can just ramp up that administration, that's great. One of the downsides we had about our previous character is she couldn't go to ground and hide herself. So she was always an easy target for other people. I think this is gonna be our winner. Let's go ahead and pick you up, and of course give you a whole bunch of organizations to make you better. I'm honestly shocked that the AI was that bold. 
But there they go, doing all of, wow, wow, wow. All right, anyway, so the layer defense array is done. Beautiful. Um, cool, what do we want now? I don't know. Um, we're already working on the bigger ships. I, I guess we could go for some basic particle cannons and stuff and just be ready for even better ships when the time comes. We're still over my governing cap and it's gonna be that way for a little while. Good news is I can easily absorb the hit Downside is, uh, being over your cap makes it easier for other people to crack down on you, which I obviously don't want. Oh, right, we wanted the advanced prospecting surveys. Let's do that. So let's go to our habitats on Earth, and let's see what we can do as far as our layer defenses. So we should be able to. We've got 80 power to spare here, so let's place you like so. Build this in space. Does it tell me how much military power I'm going to get? It looks like I get three guns of some sort. Okay, that counts for something, I guess. I've actually been planning for this for a while. We've left some space on most of my stations over Earth uh, to allow for the placement of a layered defense, uh, unless we don't have enough power, which does happen on occasion. Um, okay. Swap over to a solar array in that case. Good lord. The energy um, stations are the only thing that draw lots of extra power, and it ends up being kind of annoying. Now, how long will it take for these to be ready to go? Two months. But it looks like they will have uh, two eight-inch cannons and a point defense laser turret, but these should automatically upgrade with better weapons and army whenever uh, armor whenever we develop them. Anyway, if you think I'm not gonna go on a murder spree and kill a whole bunch of the Protectorate agents just as out of, uh, you know, uh, petty spite, then you got another thing coming. I am absolutely going to be killing a bunch of their folks just as punishment. Ho 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 ho, I see who's trying to do more murders. Really? 81% chance of success there, huh? Uh, well, I'm also targeting you because I figured you might be their uh, murderer, and I've got a 94% chance, and as long as my skill is higher than yours, I might get the gun off literally just before this guy does. <laughs> you fool! You try to murder my person, I murder you. Okay. Note to self. Never let your enemies have a counselor with high espionage. That is begging for problems. Ah, here's something interesting. Okay, so I was trying to research some different uh, guns in hopes that maybe I'd be able to boost up these layered defense arrays before they even actually get built, and it looks like that actually worked. Instead of having those small little cannons, I researched the railgun battery, and boom, we now have railgun battery mark one once these things are complete. So that should increase my defensive power a fair bit more. Awesome, so that proves it does, in fact, automatically upgrade. And now we have the high temperature superconductors as well. So does this mean that I am ready to go for fusion in space? Yes, it does. Nuclear fusion in space, increase the global nuclear fusion tech level, buffering against the energy crisis and I'll be able to start getting some better stuff. Fusion piles instead of fission piles. Why do I care about this? Because if we have more efficient uh, and more concentrated power modules on our orbital stations or on our settlement habitations, um, that means that we can have more modules freed up for other projects, which is more mission control efficient. And that's what matters. Hey, the advanced pulsar drive. There you are. Let's go ahead and research that advanced pulsar drive. I guarantee you, no matter what, having an advanced engine that's got really good range and pretty good combat stats is going to be a big boon for us. I'm curious, by the way, if I decided that I wanted to keep Britain and turn it into the new Commonwealth, what would that take? Looks like we're missing a few things, actually. Rated right arrival sociology, independence movements, the fall of empires, end of America, which we wouldn't take advantage of, but that would be a thing and then we could get the restored commonwealth. Huh. Um, okay, I mean, it's either that or we just go ahead and integrate Britain directly into the EU. Uh, but honestly, it'd be kind of fun to just go ahead and create the commonwealth, wouldn't it? We got a few extra control points sitting around. That's kind of what I'm looking at and wondering, what should I do with this? Like, we could start taking over some points in Russia. We really upset some people, but we could take over pieces of Russia. And then with Russia, I could just go ahead and have it eat uh, Kazakhstan as part of the Eurasian Union. And maybe even the Baltic States for good measure just because of border gore. And if I control the nukes, whoa, that would be a pretty good position to be in. So now we got five ships. They're not very powerful, mind you, but it's two point defense ships plus a bunch of torpedo boats. 
So if we are going up against enemy destroyers that really do have almost nothing but missiles, we've got a pretty decent chance of being able to fight against them. Oh, okay, we've caught them, and uh, they have two ships, not one. Oh. Well, that makes this a lot harder. Um, what do they do? Do they join up the... Yeah, they join up the destroyers. Okay. Well, we still got to give this one a shot, but it's going to be a little on the tougher side. Okay. So, how do I change your exact target? Set primary targets, offensive weaponry, prefer this target over others. You know, let's actually set that off for a second. So, the way that this game works is your ships are already starting off with a trajectory and a velocity, which is represented by this green uh, line. All the arrows represent different burn phases. And what you can do is you can say on the next burn, this red one right here, start a path to reach this trajectory. And you can do things kind of like this, right? You can also change uh, what direction the ship is facing by using the Z, X, and C keys. And it will try to burn to change direction if that is something that they are allowed to do, right? For now, what I think I'm going to do is actually tell them to just go ahead and let the AI take over and control all of my burns for a minute because I don't actually know what's best, like, at all. I am curious to see what the alien ships are going to do. We can see their trajectories over here as well. They're firing off some missiles already. Okay, that's fine. Um... I'm okay with this. What I want to do is make sure that my ships... Okay, they're already firing missiles. I did not tell them to do that, but they're already doing it. Hold on. Has a weapon on focus fire mode, but has not been set. A target will not fire until a target is set. Well, that's obviously not true because it is firing right now. I want to change some primary targets. Clear primary target on all of you. And let's change that up, because I need to make sure that some missiles are hitting both targets, because if we run out, but the missiles are still in the air, and any of our ships survive, we still technically will win the combat. I don't know how to tell who's focus firing what, and that's kind of part of my problem. Well, just to be safe then, let's take the surprise. And we'll hold on to some of your missiles for a minute. Okay, he's already firing off some mag guns. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Got a little close, but we are able to dodge. The closer we are, obviously, the harder it is to dodge. Okay, here comes the point defense doing their thing. Shooting down their missiles. That's great. The mag guns are going to be a little bit harder to deal with. I can't tell what we're shooting at is the problem, and I don't trust the AI because I've had this problem before where the AI doesn't actually target what I want them to target. So now I'm going to go ahead and take some ships... And hopefully they've cleared target enough that they're going to do what I want them to do. Okay, they've stopped firing missiles. I hope that's a good sign. Let's change focus fire on some of these guys over here. Make sure that we are firing missiles at both. I'm hoping to overwhelm their point defense. That's all I want to do is overwhelm them. Okay, and now I'm going to have the AI basically take over. Because I should have launched volleys at everybody at this point. They're, of course, using their point defense to knock out a whole bunch of stuff, which makes sense. Are we going to make some contact? We did. That's one out. Okay, can you guys hit the next one? Oh, 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 oh! Got it! Okay. And that last volley, we actually lost two of our monitors. But we took out the two alien destroyers. Which means we have successfully won that battle. Salvaged alien spacecraft! Aha! And you might think, hey, wait a minute. They've been crashing ships all over Earth. Remember, they've been self-destructing so we can't get their tech. Now we have actually destroyed one in space and we can finally get some of their stuff. So even the preliminary appraisal of the Treved Vessel has revealed a huge number of materials that pretty much defy our categorization. We have no idea what this stuff is. So if we can study it, we have some potential to start evening the playing field and start making use of alien tech. To call this a mother load would be the understatement of the millennium. Of course, there's going to be a price to pay for this. The aliens are going to be getting very, very angry. However, that's an objective done. Let's see what we got here. Our energy physicist has claimed his team will be able to build a reactor like nothing in human history. Uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. So now we're moving toward fighting on equal footing. Alien Tech is the new project I'm working on. The Protectorate and the Servants have been able to get this for free. I had to fight over it, and if I can research this, I'll be able to start using some really cool stuff. We also found a weird avian alien corpse, a griffin. Ah, okay. So another one of their weird, 
kind of thrall species, I guess, was piloting the ship. Very interesting. Also, we get some influence because down on Earth, they're like, hey, humans actually beat some aliens. That's amazing. Got a new project here too. A Griffin autopsy. Enemies suffer, seize space asset missions. Interesting. Oh, okay, and they have launched for our research stations. Yup, yup, here comes the reckoning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the Red Mountain and the Obsidian Fortress are going to attack. I have no choice but to attack if they want to, and they do. We could auto-resolve, and I guess we should, because there's nothing I can really do about it. So I guess we'll just let this go, but of course our station is gonna get neutralized. So there goes that, yep. One research station down, they're going for another one, uh-huh. Wait, did you not destroy the station? You just took out a module? Sure enough, that's exactly what they did. They took out the layered defense, but they didn't do anything else. Huh, okay. Well, I mean, in three months, I can have it replaced, so if all you're gonna do is go around and destroy my modules, that's fine. Okay, so far they're not attacking a second station yet, though they might. I think they sustained a tiny bit of damage, and they're like, you know what, forget this, we're out of here. Maybe, by the way, does it update my intel report now that I've actually engaged and captured the remnants of an enemy ship? Interesting, the threat level actually did reduce. Huh. That's not what I would have expected. This was from only two days ago. What? My threat went down? You only destroyed one layered module, guys. I mean, hey, I'm not complaining. That's great. Just not what I expected based on my understanding of the mechanics. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised we haven't had more reprisal from the aliens. I think they're kind of shocked that I destroyed two of their surveillance craft. Uh, maybe they never got a distress signal out because they didn't think they needed to. I don't know. But at least it gives me a little bit of time to work with. We're gonna finish up this alien tech really fast, by the way. March 11th. That's only gonna be like, what, three months? Somewhere around there. We are also now able to move on to the coil guns technology. This is a requirement to move on to plasma weapons which is kind of like a kinetic weapon and an energy weapon mixed. It, it, as far as I know, cannot be blocked by point defense, which in and of itself makes it pretty darn good. However, arc lasers, you pick this up, surface defenses will employ arc lasers. Hello. Yeah, I will at some point want to set up some defenses on all of my platforms and settlements on like, let's say Mars. That would make a lot of sense. So having them use even better lasers just is gonna ward the aliens off and make them think twice. Alien technology is done. We have a potential treasure trove of knowledge. How does it operate? What is its purpose? No idea. Let's take a look, see? Our research has been fruitful. Why is this thing in my way? I want to be able to read here, please. Well, we apparently found something, I guess. I don't know. Considering the massive energy is required to tra traverse vast distances, it's logical the interstellar invader would seek to rely on a defender's resources than haul their own. Oh, so you're saying that we found a lot of the stuff that built up the alien ships was actually harvested here in the solar system, not something they brought with them. Okay, well, that means that they are very dependent on solar mines. If we destroy those, we might be able to cripple their economy and their ability to build more ships. That could be huge. There is, however, a special alloy, something that cannot be from Earth. Some kind of an alien exotic material. We have to reverse engineer it the best way can. All right. Well, engage and defeat another alien warship and then research the salvage alien warship project. Great, so now we have to take down another one. <laughs> that oh wait, no, no, I've already done it. Hooray! Let's see, looks like the ship was kind of a patchwork of lots of stuff. They're not gods, their ships were kind of haphazard at best. Lots of patch jobs, got it. But to acquire alien alloys. Okay, so when we destroy their ships then, we'll start getting something called exotic materials. Also, we've learned some new projects. Ooh, boost up mission control investment points by 25% and knowledge by two. Okay. So we're starting to learn how to repurpose some of the alien tech. Well, that could be interesting. New project, smart spacecraft defenses, 5% less damage. Yeah, I could see that obviously being quite useful. And a new type of radiator and, ooh, Mashirovka, Rovka, however you say that, Mashirovka. So this is another one of those deceptive strategies kind of uh, missions. It's gonna reduce my MC hate generation by another 
So, if we pick this one up, we can go even higher in my MC, which is good because I'm pushing my luck a lot. All right, that's got to end up being another high priority for us. Yep, a lot of good stuff is starting to fall into place now that we've been able to knock out one of the alien ships. I'm really surprised they're not attacking me yet, but to be honest, it might just be the calm before the storm. We might have just kicked a hornet's nest and we're going to find out a huge fleet is on its way. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the notify bell, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>